Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at practice with set operations. So before you watch this video, you should watch the video where I introduce these set operations because we're just going to jump right into a bunch of practice examples. Okay. So we're going to be given this universe, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. And then we have sets A, B, and C defined as is. And here's our first two examples. We want to find A complement union C complement and A complement intersect B complement union C complement. I always encourage you to pause, try them first, and then see if we agree. Actually, the first thing that I would do before I jump into these problems, because they're all dealing with complements and I can already see with these two examples that I need to know the complements of all three sets except for the universe, I might up here, this is why I left space up here, list what the complements are. So we have the three given sets. Now we can just write the three complement sets as well. So A complement is given by, so it's everything in the universe that's not in set A, so that's everything besides one and two. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10. And B complement is given by one, six, seven, eight, and 10. And C complement does not include two or five or 10. Okay, so I have all those three. Now I don't have to think about it because they're just right there, except I wrote C, let's put C complement, great. And now we can get started. So A complement, union, C complement. Remember the union, this is or. So these are all elements that appear in the complement of A or in the complement of C or both. What I like to do is I just like to list them out um, otherwise, if I start writing up up there where all the sets are, I might confuse myself and it could be a disaster. So I'm just going to write it out. So A complement was 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. And we're going to union that with 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. So it's anything that's in either set. And I like to go numerically. So I like to go from least to greatest. The smallest element I see is 1 or the least element. Then there's three, three is in both, four is in both, not that it matters, five, I see six, seven, eight, and 10. It's basically the entire universe except for two, poor two. Um, so this here would be the set containing the elements of A complement or C complement. In the next example, we have A complement intersect B complement, union C complement. Just like in arithmetic, we want to follow order of operations. So we're going to start here with B complement, union C. So B complement, union C. And B complement, we have 1, 6, 7, 8, and 10. We're going to union that with what we find in regular set C, which was given by 2, 5, and 10. And so this is going to equal, I'm going to put it up here. So it's whatever's in either one, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Okay, so that was the first part. Now we know what this is, so we can replace this with this, and then we're going to replace a complement with what I wrote up at the top. So a complement is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. Where does this intersect with 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10? So what do these have in common? Uh, I don't see a three, I don't see a four, I see a five in both, a six, seven, eight, and 10. So the final answer here, we wanna make sure we're very clear, is the set containing the elements five, six, seven, eight, and 10. Two more examples, uh oh, let's put that up here. Two more examples in case you haven't had enough of these yet. And again, you should pause the video and try this before I go over them. Let me just erase this. There we go. You'll notice that these two are almost identical, except I moved the parentheses, right? All of the, the symbols are the same. The parentheses just shifted. So we're going to check the associative property here to see if the associative property matters at all. Starting with the first one, or actually it's the third one, we're going to start with B complement union C complement. So B complement is given by 1, 6, 7, 8, 10. And we're going to union that with C complement, which is 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. And that's going to give us 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10. Great. 
Okay, so now we're going to take this. So this here is B not union, C not. We're going to take that and we're going to intersect it with A. So A was given by 3, oh, that's a complement. A is given by 1, 2. And what does that have in common with 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10? Well, what do they have in common? They have a 1 in common. So that would be the intersection of those two sets. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say the set containing the element 1. Okay, how does that compare to this one? So this one we're going to start here in this parentheses. A is 1, 2. And we want to intersect that with B complement, which is 1, 6, 7, 8, 10. Um, what do these have in common? They have a 1 in common, so this would be 1. Okay, so now we're going to take that 1, which is the intersection of A and B complement, and we're going to union it with what's not in C. And what's not in C is 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. So this would be 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. And if you wanted to get fancy, you could say, okay, so it's this or it's just C naught or C complement. It doesn't matter. Um, I would probably just list the elements in this case. It's getting a little fancy to use complements, but you're welcome to use complements if, if you want to. All right, four more examples in case you haven't had enough. So always, I encourage you, pause the video, try them, we'll compare. Okay, so what do we have here in our first one? Now we're looking at differences of sets too, or throwing in the last thing. Looking at the problems, I don't need A complement, but I do need B complement and C complement. So I'm gonna go ahead and write both of those. B complement, so what's in the universe that's not in B? That would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And C complement, we have ooh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Okay, those are the only two I need. I don't need a complement, but you're welcome to write it if you so desire. All right, starting with our first example, we have what's in B and not in C, the difference of B and C. So what's in B that's not in C? I'll mark it and then I'm going to erase it. So they both have a 2, so that's not going to be in it. Um, B has a 3 and a 4, and that's all we care about, right? We don't care about what's in C and not in B. We only care about what's in B and not in C. So the difference of B and C is the set containing 3 and 4, and we want to union this with B complement. B complement is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So basically it's the entire universe without the number two. Sad day. So this would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. That's what we're looking at here. All right, in our next example, we have the difference of A and B. So that's everything that's in A that's not in B. What do we see that's in, I'm going to erase this because that was from the last example. So what do we see in A? They both have a 2, that's out. They both have a 3, that's out. They both have a 4, that's out. Looks like we're dealing with 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we want to intersect that with C complement. C complement is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. This is the intersection. So what do they have in common? Well, they both have a 5. So we'll put 5 in the intersection. They both have a 6, a 7, and an 8. I see them all right there. 6, 7, 8. So the set containing 5, 6, 7, 8 would be the answer to this particular question. All right, in the bottom two, again, these are the same. All of the symbols are the same, but I did move the parentheses. So first we're looking at the difference of B and A. And if we look at the difference of B and A, now you can see from my previous example, um, since we were looking at the difference of these two letters just in the reverse order, I can leave up here as is because I actually need those. Um, now what is left in B if we take out everything that's in A? There's nothing. How do we represent nothing? With the null set or the empty set. So I'm going to use the empty set and then we're going to subtract out something else. Well, we already have nothing in here so there's nothing to take out but just I'll humor myself and just write this. C complement is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. So what's in the nothing? that's not in here, well, again, nothing. So here we end up with the empty set. All right, is that gonna be the same here? Does the associative property hold here? My guess is no, but let's find out. Okay, so the difference of A and C complement, so we're gonna start with A. 
which is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we want to get rid of anything that's in C complement. C complement is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. So three is in both, four is in both, five is in both, six is in both, seven's in both, eight's in both. So the only thing we have here is two. And now what we're looking at is we're going to look at the difference of B and that set containing two. Well, what's in B? B is two, three, and four. And we want to get rid of anything that's in that second set. So it looks like our answer here would be three and four. And they are not the same, so the associative property does not work for these types of sets. And of course it doesn't work. It doesn't work for subtraction either. But these have been a bunch of examples of using these four definitions, union, intersection, complement, and difference, to just see how it plays out, to see what kind of sets we get when we kind of apply these all. Thank you for